All right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this week, I thought we would talk about um, flexibility. And usually when we think of yoga, especially in a Western mindset, we think of flexibility as being like able to move in a wide range of motion. And of course, that is what flexibility is, but it's more than that, isn't it? Um, there's also sort of a, a flexibility of mind uh, and a flexibility of being. And a flexibility of mind is about having sort of a wide range of motion in the direction that your thoughts can go. So if you know, we think about the range of motion of a shoulder joint, for example, or a hip joint, um, we can apply those same kinds of principles to the mind. Like how far can your mind uh, move <laughs> flexibly and comfortably outside of you know what we would consider normal? Like if normal is just your elbow, uh, you know, your elbow below your shoulder, then you know flexibility would be a wide range of positions of your elbow in relationship to your shoulder. And if our natural state of thinking is sort of like our shoulder, right? It just is where it is. And then we think about our thoughts and our ability to conceive ideas or even just imagine things, having a wide range of motion and relationship to our normal way of thinking, that's being flexible mind. So we're gonna kind of talk about um, how we can practice flexibility in the body uh, in, in order to practice or open up to the idea of flexibility in the mind. Um, our sutras today, our yoga sutra 246 and 247, uh, there's lots and lots of translations of these. Of course, I chose Nisha LaJoy Devi's because they're so poetic and beautiful. But yoga sutra 246 is one we hear a lot. It's stira sukham asanam. Stira meaning form or stability or strength or rigidness, steadiness. And sukha or sukham in this case, meaning uh, openness, spaciousness, flexibility, mobility. So you can see how those things are sort of opposite. And then asana, uh, we know to mean pose, but it also means to be placed or to be seated as. Um, so if we think about like our position, not just our asana as like, you know, warrior or something like that, but our position in life also could be uh, a, a sort of placement of ourselves, right? Um, there's always got to be this balance of maybe, let's say, logic and intuition as stira and sukha. Um, so that's what we're going to kind of work with today. As we move through sort of form and flexibility in our movements today, let's think about or just sort of integrate um, as we move in our bodies how we could also use these principles in the mind. So Su Yoga Sutra 246, Stira Sukha Asanam, is translated by Nisha Joy Devi as the natural comfort and joy of our being is expressed when the body becomes steady. And then 47 is, as the body yields all efforts and holdings, the infinite within is revealed. And so we can kind of think about our body as like a container. And when it's really closed, um, you know, we might not be able to see what's inside. But as we begin to open that container, or as we begin to see uh, more space in that container, that infinite that's held within this container of the body begins to show itself or be seen or recognized. Um, so that's something we can also kind of um, maybe meditate on as we practice today. Um, we're going to begin in Sukhasana, as we often do. Uh, Sukha, again, meaning ease or comfort, spaciousness. And um, we'll find our way to um, a couple of different postures from our seated pose. <clears throat> so just first finding your comfortable seat. We're also going to spend a lot of time today on our mats facing the long edge. So if you need to adjust your um, setup with the computer, feel free to do that as well. But once you find that uh, seated posture, again, we'll start to find that steadiness, the stira of the pose. So this steadiness might come from being grounded to the low body. It might come from sort of intentionally strengthening and stacking the spine long. You sort of relax the muscles and find a little bit of sukha, that softness or spaciousness, beginning to release all holdings in the body. And just notice your breath movement as your body is still. Then keeping as much length as you can in your spine, as you exhale next, just slowly let your chin come down towards your chest. Maybe take a couple of breaths to allow the back of the neck to open as much as is comfortably possible.
Then without collapsing the back of the neck, we're gonna reverse this. So we're gonna lift the chin as far as we can away from the chest and open the throat center from the point of the chin down into that little hollow space between your collarbones. Keeping in mind that we're not collapsing the back of the neck, but just lifting the front of the neck. Take a couple of breaths here to just kind of find your spaciousness in the throat center. And then we'll start to move with breath. So exhaling long and slow to allow enough time for the chin to come as close to the chest as possible. Then inhaling long and slow to lift and find that spaciousness. It's basically just cat cow, but for the neck alone. Do one more of those, lifting on our inhale, opening the front of the throat, lowering on our exhale. And then from here in this place with chin to chest, we're gonna inhale right ear up to right shoulder and just pause there, take a breath or two. Wait for the head to become heavy enough to maximize that spaciousness uh, between the left ear and the left shoulder. As we inhale, Start to float the crown of the head up towards the center so it's hovering above the tailbone. And then exhale, dropping the left ear to left shoulder. And again, pause here for a few breaths and allow, not by doing, but allowing that right side of the neck to become open. Then moving with breath on your inhale, hovering the crown over the tailbone. Exhale, right ear, right shoulder. Inhale, center, exhale, left ear, left shoulder. Let's do one more like that. Back through center, right ear, right shoulder. Inhale, center, left ear, left shoulder. Coming back to that centered place, crown hovering over the tailbone. We're gonna barrel roll the whole chest. So we're getting both those side bending movements and those cat cow movements. So first we'll start by inhaling the ribs open on the right. We might even pull the right ear up toward the shoulder. As we exhale, bringing the chest forward. So the heart, the chin is lifted, the heart is forward, tailbone's pointing back. Inhale again to left shoulder, uh, coming up towards the left ear, left ribs flay. Exhale, inhale into the back body as chin comes to chest. So it's really four breaths for each movement. So we're inhaling right arm, maybe even reaching here. Exhale, then coming forward, chin lifted, heart forward, tailbone back. Exhale, inhale, left side of body expands. Exhale, inhale into the back body as chin comes to chest. Let's do one more like that. Right side body opens as we inhale. Exhale, inhale, big, big round front belly. Exhale, inhale, left side expands. Exhale, inhale into the back body. Pausing here. Give it a breath or two, wait for the opening. And then we'll just reverse that direction. So we'll start with the left side ribs. Shoulder might come up to the uh, ear or maybe even arm reaching. Exhale, inhale forward, big front belly. Exhale, right side expands. Exhale, back body expands. Two more like that. Inhale into the left side. Exhale, inhale to the front body. Exhale, inhale into the right side body. Exhale, inhale into the back body. One more round. Here we'll come back to a more neutral spine and drawing the soles of the feet closer together knees wide into that little bound angle shape here let's just take a little bit of side bending and what we might do if it's comfortable for your body whether or not you're using support we might press the palm of the right hand uh, just on the inside of the right thigh just at, uh, underneath or right off of the knee 
and just kind of gently press down as we um, send the head and shoulders over to the left side of the mat. You might also walk that palm a little closer to the groin, just kind of giving a little bit of gentle massage and pressure to open up gently. Coming back to center, let's find the other side. So right hand might come to the mat. Left hand can just kind of give some gentle pressure on the inside of that thigh. You can kind of feel those muscles from the groin to the inside of the left knee. Just receiving a little attention and extra stretch to your comfort level. Good. Then let's start to lean back into the hands and then drawing the soles of the feet flat to the floor. Knees are still wide. Uh, rocking gently side to side. We're just gonna take a brief deer twist to each side as well. So just kind of opening up the hips here. So as one hip comes, uh, or one knee comes open wide, the other is kind of coming in towards the center. So we're getting both ways of stretch through the hip joints here. And eventually we'll find our way into a right facing deer twist. So as the right knee comes to the right, so does the left. And starting with that left hip, twisting the body all the way around, maybe even walking the hands to face behind the body. You can stay upright for about three or four breaths. You can also come down low to forearms or belly if you like. Just here briefly, see if you can find that sukha, that ease in your hips, softening any holding that we might feel there. When your last breath has passed through, start to untwist the body again until both hips are on the floor, both soles of the feet are on the floor, resting in the back of the uh, hands again. And then dropping into our left side facing deer twist, left knee coming out wide, right knee following suit, right hip begins the twist, walking the body around to your comfort level. When you find it, soften through the hips, relax, find ease and sukha. Maybe the spine and the arms are providing some stira, some support. Maybe we're lowered down to the floor and the floor is then providing that form as we soften through the hips and feel that little bit of opening there. Good. When your last breath passes here, again, coming back to facing um, the side of the mat, the long edge of the mat again, we're gonna come to a standing position um, for some moon salutations. We just had a gorgeous full moon, so hopefully some of you guys get to see that in the sky this week. Um, so beginning with the feet uh, closer together, right hip distance or so, um, find your weight settling into kind of the heels, feel it pushing on the leg bones and down into the center and the arch of the foot. Um, lengthen up your spine, soften your arms and shoulders. Feel your crown hovering over your tailbone. Bring your palms together at your heart center. Take at least one, maybe a couple of full breaths to soften into this stillness. Then on an inhale, arms are going to sweep up wide. As you exhale, lean to the left, open the right side body. Maybe a breath or two passes here. Inhale to center, exhale to lean to the right, opening the left side body. Inhale to center, exhale to step the feet wider, arms are reaching right above the shoulders. As you exhale, bend into the knees and the elbows, squatting into goddess. Inhale, straighten arms and legs to reach up. Exhale, lower. Good, one more. Inhale to stretch and straighten again. As you exhale, arms are gonna come out wide and up at shoulder height, nice and wide. We're gonna turn to face the right side of the mat. So left heel is gonna pivot just a little bit and right toes are gonna face that short edge of the mat. We're gonna turn the head to gaze over the right arm. Inhale, exhale, and squat down into warrior two. Watch your breath. Feel where is there spaciousness? Where is there stability? 
On an inhale, straighten that right leg. Exhale, reach the right arm over that right leg and find triangle pose. Take about three breaths in this shape. Left arm can be reaching for the ceiling or it can come to your hip. See how long and straight you can keep your spine here. And again, notice where is there spaciousness, maybe at the heart, and where is there form? On your next exhale, we're gonna bring that left hand down towards the right foot, pivoting into a low lunge here. Left knee can drop behind. Inhale to lift your heart away from your thigh, either pressing into the floor or maybe even the thigh itself. And then exhale, we're gonna to start to twist the heart open and the shoulders to that right side of the mat. Maybe the left hand kind of helps turn you. Maybe the right hand reaches for the back leg or the sacrum. One more breath in here. As you exhale, both hands come inside that right foot. And we're gonna extend into our skandhasana shape, our first one for the day. So we might lift and lower here by bending and straightening that right knee. Maybe we can come really low. Maybe we need our hands for support. So you can kind of choose. We're gonna take just a few breaths to experiment in this first shape, warming up for some leader poses. Good. One more breath and then we'll start to walk across the mat to find this same skandhasana shape on the other side. So now the right leg is extended, left knee is bent. Again, maybe we lift and lower. Maybe we sink really low and lift the arms. You know, make your choice. You've got about five or so breaths to play here. As the end of those breath cycles pass, we're gonna to start to turn into that low lunge again. So turning and letting the right knee drop behind you now, we're in that low lunge. Lifting the heart away from the thigh. And eventually we'll twist the shoulders open to that back side of the mat. Again, maybe that right arm comes to um, help in the twist. Maybe the left arm comes behind and begins to reach. Wonderful. After these twists, we're going to start to turn to face the front again. We're going to basically find our warrior two shape again. So arms coming out wide, bending into that front knee. Where is there space or flexibility or stretch, spaciousness? Where is there stability, firmness, and form? Good. On your next inhale, we'll straighten that front leg. Exhale, reaching with that top arm and finding triangle pose for about three or four breaths. Again, that right arm on top might be right, reaching for the sky. It might be on the hip. We're being mindful about lengthening the spine. Where is their openness? Where is their form? Notice how those two things support one another. Without first learning the basics of something, we cannot think beyond them. <coughs> On an inhale, we'll start to straighten ourselves back up, coming back into a wide leg, full, uh, wide leg shape. Arms will sweep up and overhead, hands reaching above the shoulders. We're taking three of those goddess squats again. So inhale to reach and straighten, exhale to bend at elbows and knees to squat. Inhale, reaching up, exhale, squatting. One more, inhale, reach up. Exhale, squat into goddess. Maybe hold here. Maybe hands come to support you on the thighs or reach out or maybe come to prayer center. Any of those options. See if you can take about three more breaths. Feel the spaciousness here between your ankles. Good. Straighten both your legs, step your feet back together. Hands will come to meet at your heart center. Inhale, let your arms rise. Exhale, lean to the left, opening the right side body. Inhale to center. Exhale, leaning to the right, opening the left side body. Inhale back to center and bring your palms back to your heart. Take a nice big inhale here. Exhale, release your hands softly down to your side. Pause for three breaths. 
Notice in your natural standing where there is spaciousness, where there's stability or form. Are your muscles soft? Are your bones strong? Just kind of notice that natural standing. And to increase our flexibility again, we're gonna move into a wider stance here again. So feet stepping wide across the mat. As we inhale, we're gonna bring arms out wide, big circle, palms coming together above your head. Exhale, we're gonna squat, bringing the prayer hands to the heart and bringing the knees to bend. Good, inhale, straighten and stretch. As you exhale, arms are gonna come out. We're gonna kind of swan dive into a flat back fold here. So this is a place where blocks might be useful if the floor feels far away. In your flat back fold, just gently shift hips side to side, start to feel that inner thigh muscle, getting a little bit of that spaciousness and stretch. And then we're basically gonna move through this same flow a couple more times. So from this flat back fold, we're gonna see if we can keep the back flat this entire process of movement. So as you inhale, arms come out wide, we reverse swan dive, palms come together above the head as body hinges flat, flat again. Exhale, bending at the knees, palms coming towards the heart center. Good. Inhale, lift and straighten. Exhale, swan dive into your flat back fold. Being mindful of that flat back. Inhale, hinge up, arms swing out wide, palms together. Exhale, squat into goddess. Inhale, straighten and stretch up. Exhale, swan dive into your flat back fold. Rising on your inhale, squatting into goddess on your exhale, rising on your inhale, hinging and folding on your exhale. Let's do two more. Landing in our flat back fold after all of our cycles here. We're gonna soften at the knees to come into a little yogi squat. You might have to kind of heel toe your feet a little closer together. Feel free to use any kind of support underneath your hips as we pause in our <clears throat> yogi squat here. Let's see if we can find that same sense of downward pull through easing the muscles in the hips, the knees and the feet and intentionally lengthening or bringing more structure into the spine. Hands can support you on the floor, they can come to heart. And so part of this is about uh, allowing and developing that relationship between stability and form that we have as our lifted spine and ease and spaciousness, which hopefully we're finding through relaxation in the hips. You have to know the rules to bend them, as they say, or master certain um, standard forms of art before you can really be more creative with those techniques and implementations. And so these things really complement each other. It's not that being rigid is bad and being loosey-goosey is always good. Sometimes not enough structure limits your imagination and flexibility. And sometimes too much flexibility means that you haven't really understood the concept. So, you know, finding this balance and just noticing how that relationship shows up in your body and in your mind, in your life, in your thought processes. One more breath here. See if you can be comfortable and relaxed. Good. From here, we're going to bring hands to the floor if they're not already so that we can lean a little to the right and start to extend that left leg long. So here's our Skandasana. Again, we might be up high for this, we might be down low. Go with what your body is comfortable with. Pause here for a breath or so. And then what we're gonna try to do is start to lean towards the back body, maybe hands come behind to catch you. Sitting bones are gonna come down to the floor. So we have the right sole of the foot on the floor and then draw the right knee down towards the center of the mat. See if you can kind of bring that into like a half hero. So it's a little bit of a twist. If it doesn't come all the way down, that's okay. And maybe just kind of hinging that knee up and down. 
Good. Maybe you can pause there. Maybe it's better to keep movement. Notice what's right for you. Then we're gonna up, open that knee back up so that we can turn the whole body to the opposite short edge of the mat to find that little lunge pose again. So it might take a little bit of effort to find your way there, that's okay. <clears throat> Once we're in our lunge, we can fold forward. So this time we're gonna kind of lean into that thigh. Perhaps if you're a little bit more flexible, you can bring your right hand inside the right but and kind of lean inside of that thigh. So up to you, whether this is a lunge or a dragon type shape. Tucking the left toes behind you underneath the mat, use your hands to help yourself come to standing. Kind of center that right foot in a place where you can come to a pyramid shape. Ideally, both of your legs are pretty straight here. Hips and shoulders are sort of squared off. You might have blocks under your hands here so that your torso can be a little higher. You can also rest your hands on your shin or your thigh. We're looking for a flat back pyramid type shape here. If you want a little bit of a challenge, you can bend into that right knee and lift the left foot away from the floor for a little balance in warrior three. You don't have to do that by any means, but feel free to if you like. And from this place, we're gonna, are, we are gonna start to shift our weight into the right foot. If you did not take that warrior three variation, start to send your weight into your hands and your right foot. We're gonna start to bend the left knee and draw it up in towards the chest. So that's kind of a tricky move, a lot of balance required. Pulling that in. Feeling free to step down and get your balance and come back in. Then rather than finding a tree pose from here, we're gonna bring that left knee out to the left, but then cross that left angle kind of just above the right knee. So we have sort of a figure four shape here. Then rising maybe through the arms, we could also bring them to heart center or to hips, bending into that right knee if you can. See if you can come into a little chair, pigeon chair type thing. You could also come down to the floor if you wanna, if your flexibility allows, you can bring yourself down uh, into a little fold here as well. That's up to you. But the, the idea is to kind of bring the right knee to bend so that you can kind of feel that strong stretch in the left hip. When you are ready to come out of that pose, whether you're all the way to the floor or you're just kind of squatting down, straighten the right leg, bring your left foot back down to the mat, release your hands, and just kind of do a little twisting side to side, softness, find a sukha in the body. Release all tension and holding. Then from here, we're gonna to start to turn back again to our long edge of the mat, bringing our feet back wide again. And we're gonna squat down into the skandasana here on the left side. So left knee's gonna bend, right leg's gonna come out long. And again, feel free to find either movement here, up and down or just kind of gentle movement in some other way. Your hands can support you on the floor or come up and away from the floor if you like. We're gonna try to support ourselves to um, sort of sit back onto the sitting bones. Hands can come behind the body to kind of support you into that pose. Right leg is still long. We might adjust the position of our left foot so that we can drop the knee in towards the center of the mat. We're sort of twisting open and closed here. If it's comfortable for you, you can also just pause in like a half hero kind of shape. So movement or dynamic or static pose is fine here. Just kind of notice what works best for you. And your knee doesn't have to come all the way to the floor. Just kind of moving that knee back and forth. Take another breath with either your movement or your stillness pose. And then we'll, again, twist the body in the opposite direction to move into that lunge. Feel free to take your time to arrive. It doesn't need to be graceful or fluid. 
So that right knee is dropped behind us. The left sole of the foot is on the floor. Your body is low in that lunge, facing the short edge of your mat. And we're again gonna kind of lean the chin into the chest, kind of opening the back body. If your body is flexible enough and allows for it to be comfortable, you can bring your left hand inside and take more of a dragon type of bow here. Just taking a few breaths. If you utilize your blocks or supports on your other side, maybe make sure you have those handy. Just from here, we're gonna move back into that pyramid shape. So the right toes are going to tuck behind the body. And we'll start to move again. Feel free to reposition your legs. Ideally, both heels on the mat, both legs roughly straight hips and shoulders roughly squared up to that front edge of the mat. Perhaps we're using blocks underneath the hands here to support a little bit more of a flat back. You can also, again, rest on your shin or your thighs to find that same kind of support. Perhaps we decide to take that little bit of flight here by walking the hands a little further forward, sending weight into that left leg and starting to lift the right leg for a little brief balance here in warrior three, optional. If your left leg, or excuse me, right leg is still on the mat here, we're starting to send our weight now into the left foot. We're gonna bring the right knee to bend and coil up towards the chest as we come to standing. So we're just kind of pulling that right knee up as we come to standing, balancing on the left leg. Then for that same purpose, we're gonna to start to open that right knee out wide to the right. And rather than finding tree pose, the right ankle is gonna rest on the left thigh just above the knee. And hands can be heart center hips or raised above the head as we squat down a little bit, bending into that left knee, opening up the right hip. Perhaps if your body allows it, you can come into that little fold here. If your blocks maybe are still handy or you're comfortable reaching the floor. If you fall out, come back. This is challenging. And we're finding that balance here in this challenge of effort and ease. What is my body comfortable with? Where could I offer a little more stability? Where could I be a little softer about it? When you're ready to come out of this pose, we'll just come back to standing and then placing the left foot or right foot on the floor next to the left again. Just take those little soft, easy twists, releasing any holding tension in the body. We're going to move back to facing the long edge of our mat. We're going to move through one more moon salutation before we find our way to the earth. Um, so we've kind of really opened up through our hips this time. We're going to try to play that up a little bit as we take this last round of sun salutation. So finding your stance, hands at heart center. Take at least two or three breaths in stillness. Let your body settle, release tension, soften and lengthen your breath. Inhale and arms reach up, exhale, lean to the right, left side body opens. Let your breath flow as smoothly as you can. Inhale to center. Exhale, lean to the left, right side body opens. Form in the body and spaciousness in the breath, flexibility in body and mind. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, step the feet wide. Arms are gonna be reaching straight up above the shoulders. Next, exhale, bending at the elbows and knees, squatting into goddess. Inhale, stretch and straighten upward. Exhale, squat goddess. One more, inhale, stretch and straighten. Exhale, squat, maybe hold here. When you're ready to come out of this shape, we're gonna straighten the arms and the legs again, just like we did before. And arms are gonna hinge out to the sides to find like that star shape in the body. 
This time we're gonna turn our right ankle so that toes and heels of the right foot are facing long edges and point the left toes toward the short edge of the mat, turning the gaze look over the left hand. Big inhale to lift and lengthen, exhale bending into that left knee. Feel that inner left thigh. Where is their spaciousness? Where is their form? Where is their flexibility? Where is their stability? Inhale, left leg straightens. Exhale, reach with the left arm and find your triangle pose. Three breaths. Third, exhale, right hand comes down towards the left foot. We pivot a little bit on that back foot to come into that low lunge. This time we're gonna find a deeper twist. So balancing on right hand and left foot, inhale and sweep the left arm up and back, twisting the heart open to that left side of the mat. You might be pressing against your left thigh or just reaching up and back. Maybe we grasp for that right foot. Exhale, and both hands come inside the left foot. Right leg extends as we find our skandhasana. Again, hands can be supporting you. You can lift and lower. You can pause here. Find your balance of stability and flexibility here, stira and sukha. How flexibly can, or openly can you interpret this pose? Two more breaths to play here. And then we'll begin our little journey over to the other side of the mat, starting to straighten the left leg and bending into that right knee to find Skandasana. Again, about five to seven breaths here to either find movement or stillness in your Skandasana. How can you use your imagination to reinterpret this pose to find your personal blend of balance between our form and flexibility. Another breath or so here before we start to turn our body again into that low lunge. So we'll start to face the right foot. Left knee is gonna drop behind us on the mat. Balancing on the right foot and that left hand sweeping the right arm up and back to twist open to the right. Perhaps right hand is on the thigh. Right arm might be reaching up and back or grasping for that left foot. Finding your interpretation of that balance between flexibility and stability. Openness and tight structure. When you've taken your breath that's ready to come out of the pose, we'll again come back to framing that right foot. Left toes are gonna tuck underneath this. We're gonna start to rise into a standing shape here. Feel free to adjust your stance as you rise. Arms are coming out wide at shoulder height. Exhale into that right knee, warrior two. Feel where there's spaciousness, flexibility, and form and stability in the shape. Good. Feel that inner right thigh <laughs> stretching. Then inhale to straighten your right leg. Exhale to reach the right arm over the right leg and pivoting into our triangle pose for three breaths. Good. As you inhale to come out of this shape, we might bend into that right knee a little bit to push ourselves back up to standing in our wide shape. Arms are going to sweep out wide. Hands reaching straight above the shoulders. Exhale into goddess. Inhale, stretch and straighten. Exhale, goddess. Good. One more. Exhale, goddess. Maybe pause. Good, good, good. 
Hands might choose to come to heart center here. When you're ready to come out, inhale to straighten your legs, stepping your feet a little closer together. Hands at heart center. Inhale, prayer hands rise. Exhale, lean to the right, left side body opens. Inhale, center, exhale to the left, right side body opens. Inhale to center. Exhale, release your hands all the way down to your sides. Maybe shake out any tension and just stand paused for about three breaths. Where is there structure and form in your natural stance? Where is there openness and flexibility, a softness in your regular stance? From here, we're gonna come down to the mat. So we can go back to facing our more traditional orientation on the mat. Coming to seated in the center of your mat. So also the feet on the floor. Let's tuck the chin to the chest and just kind of lean inward towards the heart. Hands might start to reach for the front of the shins or towards the toes to open the back body. And keeping that openness, that spaciousness in the back body, start to roll. You can use your hands for support as you roll your body down to the mat. Coming to you lie on the spine. You can keep your soles of your feet on the floor or you can extend your legs long entirely up to you. The first part of our motion here has to do with the upper body. Hands can be anywhere that's comfortable for you. Then just gently start to turn uh, your head so that your nose is facing towards the right side of your mat. Inhale, center. Exhale, turn your head to the left. Nose pointing towards the left side of your mat. Pause. and move with your breath, inhaling to center, exhaling to turn the head to one side. Inhale, center, exhale, turn your head to the other side. When you've completed an uh, even number of rounds on both sides, coming back to center here. We'll start to draw the arms uh, up and overhead, resting the backs of the hands on the floor above you. And again, legs can be extended here or they can still be soles of the feet on the floor. We're going to find some little moon bends to each side. So walking head, shoulders, hands and arms over to the right side, keeping your sacrum intact in the same spot on the mat. Feel the left side body open. See if you can soften down into the mat, releasing any holding or tension in the body. Find the ease. Notice how the more you relax, the more openness there is throughout the armpit area, chest, the heart center. Walk yourself back through center once you arrive there. Just take a breath or two or three in a neutral zone. Then we'll move head, shoulders, arms, everything over here to the left side of the mat. Sacrum is still in the same spot on the mat. Feel the right side body open. Then soften and relax and allow the shape to open your body rather than pushing yourself open through the heart or stretching yourself open through the arms and armpits. Soften and allow that to naturally shine within you. Remember that our body is in many ways, a sort of opaque container for the divine. And the more open we can become, the more that divine within us begins to be visible and tangible, the more we let out that divine within. Exhale, 
several more rounds of breath here to allow the softening to happen. Notice where there might still be tension in the body. And release the tension of your body to the support and structure of the floor. Coming back again to center when it feels right. If your legs are not already extended long, go ahead and extend your legs long. Arms are gonna come out to about shoulder height. Elbows can be straight or bent here. We might have like a wide V, a T shape or a W shape. So choose the letter that your body wants to take the form of today. And as we do this, the right knee is gonna to come to bend and in towards the chest, good. Start to roll that right knee open to the right for just a moment, it doesn't have to come to the floor, just kind of pull it open a little bit. Then start to cross the body with that right knee, reaching towards the left side, it does not need to come to the floor. You might feel your body starting to roll onto that left hip a little bit, that's okay. See if you can keep your right shoulder on the floor just kind of gently for a couple of breaths, reach that right knee towards the left side. Exhaling, come back to flat on your back. We'll extend that right leg long again. Take just a couple of neutralizing breaths. Recenter your spine as needed, soften, let go. Release any structure and effort in the body. Just allow the floor to hold you. Come soft and open at ease in Sukha. Then left knee will start to bend in towards the chest again, very softly and gently. Just allow the left knee to come open to the left. It does not need to come to the floor. We're just opening up to that side to create some flexibility in the hip joint. And just as we did last time, that left knee is gonna to start to cross the body and reach toward the right. It does not need to come to the floor. You might feel your body rolling up onto that right hip a little bit. See if you can keep your left shoulder at ease and soft on the mat. Just a few rounds of breath here. As you feel ready to return to neutral, come back onto that flat back. Feel free to make any adjustments to your spine. We're gonna to try to take a, a slightly more spacious Shavasana today. Um, so maybe keeping the arms uh, wide and away from the body, they can come up and overhead. They can just be out wide, straight towards like a T shape or even down towards the hips a little bit, but just away from the body. We might bring a little bit more spaciousness between the heels here. I'm just letting the toes fall open to their respective sides to create a little spaciousness, a little external rotation of each leg outward to the sides of the mat. Feel free to take any or make any adjustments that might make this pose more comfortable for you. The end goal of this Shavasana shape is to find as much openness as possible and releasing as much tension or holding in the body as possible. So listening to your own body, the messages that you're hearing, the spaciousness and the form. Ideally, ideally we are externalizing all of the structure that we would hold through tension in the muscles or through the weight of the bones into the floor. So we can just soften each muscle group. Just allow the floor itself to provide your structure. And in many ways, we, through the practice of yoga, are aiming to join or um, bring ourselves into connection and union with the divine. We do this in our body through our breath, through intentional movement and grace in our bodies. 
We do this in the mind, the same way that we're allowing our body to soften into the floor and allow the external floor to kind of hold that structure. We release ourselves of our internal structure of our egoic individualistic mind and just sort of soften and allow the divine mentality, that divine consciousness to become our form. And within that infinite space and form of divine consciousness, we have a great deal of flexibility for inspiration, for new ideas, for new ways of thinking and imagining and being. And with that level of possibility and flexibility available to us, both in our bodies and in our minds, how could there ever be any lack? what joy there is in knowing our oneness, what possibility there is in that limitless nature. And we can allow ourselves to rest in that and find comfort there. Feel the container of your body becoming softer and more pliable, more flexible, to allow that divine sacredness to be revealed from within. Feel the breath moving in and out of the body defining that permeability of our container. And just begin to consider consciousness and the mind, the container of our individual mental constructs. 
not becoming softer and more flexible, being permeated by that divine consciousness. Feel new ideas flowing in and creative expressions flowing out just like our breath. Flexible, permeable. And using that creativity, using that limitless imagination, start to creatively find your way back to movement, starting with whatever part of your body begins to show itself to you. Feel and breathe in that inspiration. And express and breathe out as your body begins to find subtle movements. Over the next 10 or 12 breaths, taking your time to arrive, find the movements or discover the movements or explore the movements that bring you back to an upright seat, taking your time, relishing in that process, breathing in inspiration, breathing out expression. As you arrive in your upright seat, feel that steadiness come over the body as your weight settles into the sitting bones. Feel ease in the hips and structure and form in the spine. Feel spaciousness in the heart and the belly. And drawing the palms to press together just softly and gently. Feel the places where your fingertips the base of your palms are touching and that spaciousness between sets of knuckles and the spaciousness between the palms, feel that balance. Flexible in our breath, flexible in our bodies, flexible in our minds. We offer ourselves humbly as containers and vehicles for that divine will, that divine love a divine being to move through us just as our breath does. And so we close our yoga practice today with this prayer of service. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings be happy, healthy, safe, and free. Namaste. Oh. Uh...